Welcome to the Insomnia Project. First episode of the new season. I want you to just sit back, lay back, just be back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation that's meant to help relax you, ease anxiety, and who knows, maybe even help you fall asleep. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. Hi, I'm right here beside him. That's Amanda Barker. Yeah, hi. Amanda, it's the first episode back from, you know, from a, a brief hiatus for us. A winter slumber. A winter slumber, a if you A hibernation of January. And now it's Feb, Feb 1st. To... Yeah, who, who has time to say all of February anymore? It's true. The old Feb 1st. <laughs> Feb 1st. Tomorrow's Groundhog's Day. No, is it? Yeah, today's Feb 1st, so tomorrow, February 2nd, is Groundhog's Day. I did not know that. You're so surprised. You you startled me there for a second. I know. I hope I didn't startle anyone listening. I just, I thought that happened in March. No. I no, really thought no, no, that no. happened in March. F- February 2nd uh, is oh Groundhog's God. Day. Why? It feels like, do you celebrate Groundhog's Day that it's such a, it has I such an know. impact on you? I don't ever you? understand it. I really, truly never understood it. Well, I mean, if it sees its shadow, more winter. If it doesn't. I don't, I don't understand. Do they... Do these groundhogs live in some in a nice kennel, and then they just put them in a manufactured hole? Like, there's no no. Those are just, they don't have calendars in their little hovels where uh, they're like, oh, guys, it's Feb second, we got to come out. Tomorrow's the day. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I don't know, and either. I've never understood it. I've never, I never really did any research on it because for me, it's kind of like yeah. And plus, it happens so early in the morning that by the time I'm awake, well, it, we have. Wyerton Willie here in Canada. That's right. But in the States, they have Pen- Penobscot Pen- Pete. No, Pen- Pence, uh, P- Puxatawney Pete. Pete. Yeah, something like that. Is that what it is? Okay. Something like that. I'm sure our friends from wherever no, that Penob- is. Penobscot. <laughs> no. That... That's, that's in Maine. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's a town in Maine. That's also the last name of Margaret Houlihan's um, husband on MASH. She married... Penobscot? Yeah, married Penobscot. Oh, well, that's a, it's like a county in in northern Maine. What's that county like? Penobscot County. You've been through it. I have? Yeah, Holton is in Penobscot oh, County, I, see. I believe, yeah. Or is it in Bangor County? No, I think it's Penobscot. Wow. Well, that brings me to what I wanted to talk about today. We recently went on a trip to Vermont. Have we not spoken about this? We haven't spoken in depth about Vermont. We sort of gave indications of Vermont, and I just wanted to tell our listeners how beautiful Vermont is. Well, I feel like my brain is is uh, has to take a little trip back there, so it might take a moment, so maybe you can start us off. Of course. So we went to Vermont um, with the intention to go to Stowe in Vermont mm-hmm. because it was uh, always something that's been on our radar, and to be quite honest with you, Amanda was flipping through one of her many magazines. This time it was her CAA magazine, if I'm not mistaken. Was no, it your, no, no, it wasn't. Which it magazine? It was uh, Canadian Living. It was her Canadian Living magazine. So CLM. Her CLM, if you will. And in the CLM magazine, which they don't call it that, but no, we'll forever. Now, now they do. Now they do. It tells you recipes. It tells you, I don't know what else that magazine kind of shares with you. Recipes, travel tips, budgeting advice. It's a great magazine. All kinds of things. And it was talking about great Christmas markets. And one of the places it mentioned was Stowe, Vermont. And Amanda was looking at it and she said, what if we go to Stowe, Vermont for your birthday? And I said, oh, I would love that. I've always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But it was going to be a long trip from Toronto to Stowe. But if you drive to Montreal, it's only three hours from Montreal, and we have a friend in Montreal. So we incorporated Montreal into the travel plans there. So we first went to Montreal. was lovely. Mm-hmm. Then the next morning, we got up, and we drove to Vermont. And I'm trying to remember the um, border crossing, what that was like. I don't remember it. Uh, the border crossing into Vermont? Yeah. Um. Let me think. It was uneventful, I guess. Yeah, it was pretty small. Pretty smooth. They were nice. And so we went from there directly to Burlington, right? Yeah, yeah. So we and went. We spent the night in Burlington. We spent the night in Burlington, and Bur- Burlington is where um, what's his name is from. His name is Bernie Sanders. Yes, of course, Bernie Sanders is from. We did not meet Bernie Sanders, mm-hmm. but we got to see. Burlington, and it's really quite beautiful. I think we looked for the coat factory, and we couldn't find it. The famous Vermonters are Bernie Sanders, but also Ben and Jerry of Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. That's right. And so 
that, and we we went to that factory. We went too. to their factory the next day. Yeah, the next day we were driving and we saw it. Just sort of came upon us the Ben and Jerry's factory, and we quickly made a sharp left turn to get into. Do we do this or do we not do this? And then we thought, let's do it. And then we found out it wasn't open. That was going to be our only like opportunity to do it. So it was the right choice. Yeah. So we because it was closed the next day. Mm -hmm. So we went in. We did the Ben and Jerry's tour, and it was delightful. Although it's fascinating, Amanda, we spent more on Benny Jerry, Ben and Jerry's ice cream there in Vermont mm -hmm. at the factory than we did the other day when I bought a pint of Ben and Jerry's and I brought it home. Interesting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we, we tend to get it on sale, but um, yeah, there's different prices on different parts of the world and different sides of the border. And uh, I actually think we, we do okay in Canada. I mean, it's you know, it, yeah. it's uh, we have different dairy um, marketing boards and sure. things that control things. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting that I learned at the Ben and Jerry's factory was that Ben, I believe, um, had no sense of taste. That's right. And so um, he enjoyed food by mouthfeel alone. So that is why that ice cream is a typically very chunky ice cream, whatever they flavor it with, it tends to have a lot of chunk chunkiness to it, sure. whatever you're putting into it. It's sort of known for that. And uh, and it's one of the reasons it's so beloved. And the truth is, is that was how he enjoyed his food, by texture. So he wanted a very textured product in the ice cream. And in fact, they had wanted to be bagel makers, but they couldn't afford the bagel machine. So they thought an ice cream machine is cheaper. So that's why they went into that. Isn't that amazing? That's a great story. I remember thinking, wow. If they, they did an ice cream course by correspondence. That's right. From, I think, the University of Pennsylvania or something like that. Sure, sure. It was, it was, it's a great story. And mm -hmm. now we have their great ice cream to enjoy. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention while we were driving through Vermont, it was gorgeous because it was snowing. Oh, yeah, it was uh, beautiful. Like it, 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 there was a big snowfall prior to us getting there, but it was also snowing as we drove in, mm -hmm. and all the trees were heavy with snow. Yeah, and it looked like we were driving in a, you know, winter postcard or in a Christmas card. It was just so gorgeous, and I think it was me who said to you, you know, Vermont means Green Mountain, and you're like, this is the first you ever made that connection. Yeah, of Green they Mountain. Are Mont. Right. Yeah, I never made that connection, and you could see it because they have. It's like mountainous. It's kind of like there's a lot of rolling hills that you're driving through. I mm -hmm. want to say to the people of Vermont that their highways were wonderful. And uh, we drove from Burlington. Our next stop was, of course, Ben and Jerry's. I can't remember the town that was. Mm -hmm. But then we went to um, – before we went to Stowe, we decided we to take a, a side, Yeah, a little detour. That's right. I forgot. That was a fun detour to Montpellier. Or Montpellier, but I don't think anyone there calls it that with that French accent. So it's Montpellier. It was one of those things where it made us like, should we go there or should we go straight to Stowe? Mm -hmm. And we would have been in Stowe before we could check in. Mm -hmm. And so we said, well, let's see how long it takes us to get to Montpellier. And we decided to go. Mm -hmm. And it's a quaint, charming, lovely town. Yeah. And then we went to a farmer's market. We did. We went into Montpelier, took a little drive through the town. And Stopped at a stationery store where I purchased a bunch of little things. Yeah, it was a nice town. And we sort of went from one end to the other. And on one end of the town, there was a sign that said Farmer's Market with uh, the address on it. I think it was like 22 Gin Avenue. So I put that into our little GPS. And it was, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's the capital of Vermont, but... It's honestly like a small town. I mean, it's one s sort of main street. And um, and this gin avenue is just off sort of the main drag. It's a gin distillery, I think, that they also use as a big event space for different things. And so on Saturday mornings, and we were there on a Saturday morning, it's the farmer's market. So we got to go in and we bought some really beautiful, really beautiful, wonderful cheese, if you're a cheese fan, which we are. And um, it was a local, a lot of local cheesemakers in Vermont. Vermont is really known for its its cheese. And um, so he was telling us about the different cheeses, and we bought three or four of them. They were very well priced, I want to add. They were not expensive for, for gourmet cheese. And uh, we said, we're not from here. And he said, oh, I know. And we said, 
how did you know that? Is it obvious? And he said, oh, because I know everybody here and I've never seen you before. And I thought, you know, that's a capital city of a state. Yeah. Isn't that amazing that you just walk into the farmer's market and a local farmer there already knows that you're not from there? It's so wonderful, mm -hmm. Amanda. I, I, you know, it's funny because I'm always talking about places that I love, and it feels like everywhere I go, I fall in love with that place. Well, that's the beauty of travel. And that has to be said about Vermont. I would go back. I would like to go back in mm -hmm. the summer. Yeah. And one of our listeners, Charlotte, reached out to us because I had posted a picture of the stationery store. Behind the stationery store, they have like a mural on, on the wall. Right. And I took yeah. a picture. I thought it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Charlotte could tell from that picture that I posted on on Instagram that we were in Vermont. And she's like, you're in my, you know, home state. I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope you get a chance to check out the local book bookstores in Burlington yeah. and Montpellier. And we didn't check out too many of the bookstores, but I'd like to go back because you know me, I love bookstores. I love libraries. I would love to spend a little more time in Montpellier. Well, we have a dear friend in Montreal. And of course, we love Montreal and Quebec. And so Vermont is a nice sort of side trip, side journey from that, because obviously it's on the border to Quebec. And Burlington really wasn't that far it from, wasn't. from Montreal. So, yeah, I think it's absolutely doable, especially just to see a different season. Sure. Because it was glorious in the winter, and uh, and that was wonderful. But, yeah, I would love to go back in in the summer. I'd love to go to Lake Champlain because we didn't get to see that. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we were very close to it, too, when we were in Burlington. We mm -hmm. just didn't. We went to that wonderful restaurant too in in Burlington. Remember, it yeah. was it was that evening we spent. I believe it was called Hen of the Woods. Hen of the Woods, yeah, yeah. And it was wonderful. Everyone recommended it, and it was in the sort of ground floor of a local hotel, and um, everyone said that's that's where you go. And we did. We had a beautiful meal there, really fun meal. There. It was fun, mm -hmm. and it was one of those things when we weren't too hungry, and they didn't yeah. have seating, you know, on the proper sort of tables and they said would you like to sit at the bar and we thought oh we'll get a few sort of just appetizer-y things and we yeah, enjoyed never it never be afraid to sit at the bar You'll, sometimes you get a better view of the restaurant you can chat with a bartender or people around you so yeah it was, I'm glad we did that so then from from Montpellier we went to Stowe mm -hmm. and that was when the trip really started to be magnificent what did say. you love about Stowe well Stowe itself the the downtown area or the main drag is so picturesque. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It has a lot of the stores that I enjoy going into, which we often refer to as knickknack stores, <laughs> where they have a lot of things that you can pick up and look at and turn upside down. And Amanda knows that I love to do that. Now, rarely do I buy things anymore from the knickknack store because it's all stuff that we don't need. And I've sort of convinced myself that I have enough knickknacks that I don't need anymore. Well, I don't ever want to erase your joy in the hunt for them. And I think what we do is we turn it into a gift buying mission of, um, at that time, Christmas gifts or looking for an ornament. Right. Um, or just looking for something interesting. We think about what birthdays are coming up and we use that excuse to buy something. So we do shop, but we don't shop with the intent of... Uh, if we don't know where it would go in our house, then we don't buy it because that you, it can become a lot. Right. So we don't do that. But we definitely find excuses. Why not buy something handmade and lovely for your friend's next birthday if you happen to be traveling? And which we did. And then from the downtown, you asked me what part did I enjoy most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We decided to splurge a bit and we deci decided to stay at the Von Trapp Family Lodge. And if that name is familiar to you, it might be because you've seen The Sound of Music, which retells the tale of the Von Trapp family as they escaped Nazi Austria and made it to, um, to the U.S. I think mm -hmm. they just made it out in the movie. but Yeah, the eventually the U.S. Yeah, the, the family ends up in Vermont where they start a lodge and we got to stay there. And it was the perfect mix of the family's tale and Vermont itself. So if you're a skier or someone who enjoys the outdoors, you would probably really enjoy this lodge. If you're a fan of the movie the way I am, then you're going to enjoy all the things that the, the lodge has to offer to you as well. And so I had a great time. And it's funny, Amanda, you mentioned how, you know, we would pick up souvenirs and that's where we buy stuff we bought 
some mustard from the gift shop. It's true. And we didn't know how the mustard would be. Sometimes, you know, they get mustard and it's just sort of prepackaged for them from a packager outside of the state. Or, right, right. And we, we gifted it to your folks. And your folks aren't picky people, but they certainly aren't effusive with their praise for stuff that is kind of pedestrian, let's say. I'm not sure what that sentence means. Okay. But. I wasn't expecting your parents to love the mustard My as much as they did. Love, like, it was, it was, in fact, as I just said, we used my parents and we knew we were going to see my parents right after. So we used it as an excuse to buy some mustard from the Von Trapp family inn as we just thought it would be a nice little gift. And who doesn't need mustard? When you don't know what to buy someone, always buy mustard. <laughs> Anyhow, they we saw them recently and they were effusive with their praise for this mustard. In they other, loved the Von Trapp mustard. In other words, this mustard certainly cut the mustard. Nice. Thank really you. Really nice. So we got to stay in that hotel. It was really charming. They have a lot of photos of the family all over the place. I learned. So for starters, it's a true story. Our friend, our dear friend, Michelle, uh, we talk about a lot on this podcast, said, wait a minute, those people were real. I didn't know that was a real story. We had another friend who didn't know how the story ended and thought that the sound of music, she's never seen it ends in a very different way. Um, we, so, yeah, we won't get into that. We won't get into that. So, you know, there's a lot of lore around mm -hmm. the Von Traps and the Sound of Music. But I actually thought one of the interesting things was learning about how that movie and how the musical came to be. And really, um, if I may, just dive very quickly into that. Of course. So Maria Von Trapp, who, of course, it was became an icon with and, and synonymous with Julie Andrews. Who played her in the movie. Who played her in the movie. She sold. She wrote the book. Um, this I is think, Maria Von Trapp, not Julie, not Julie, yeah, Julie Andrews. Maria Von Trapp, I think after they settled in Vermont, just to make some money, wrote the book uh, about their story. She thought they had an interesting story and thought she'd write a book about it. Well... Um, Post-World War II in the 1950s, I believe, um, Austria made it into a movie. You know, the story of their escape and all of that. And they were fairly known. I don't think it was Austria. I think it was a German film. It was a German film. It was I thought a German. it was an Austrian film. Okay. Well, in any anyhow, the movie was definitely in German. And um, they made the uh, the film about it. The film went largely unnoticed. But somehow, Mary Martin... Um, who was a very well-known Broadway performer, saw the German film and took it to Rogers and Hammerstein and said, you know, she needed, she, she was best known and probably still best known for being Peter Pan on Broadway. Um, she originated that role, I believe. And oh, she originated it. The uh, role of Peter Pan, okay. yeah. yeah. It, it was played by Sandy Duncan and right. many other people, but the original role of, of Peter Pan on Broadway, the musical Peter Pan, on Broadway was played by Mary Martin. And so I think at that point she was looking for another musical, another vehicle, and thought, this is a very interesting story. Perhaps it would make a nice musical. So Rogers and Hammerstein, of course, as we know now, wrote the musical. She, of course, did star in it for a long time. As Maria Von Trapp. As Maria Von Trapp. She was the original Maria Von Trapp. Now, the one thing I don't know is if Julie Andrews stepped into the role on Broadway or if she just played it in the film. I think she just played it in the film, but just to rewind a bit. Yeah. So the book that she wrote was called The Story of the Von Trapp Family Singers, which was published in 1949. And you're right. It was the inspiration for a 1956 West German film. So that's where I'm right, called okay. The Trapp Family. I see. Which in turn was inspired for the 1959 Broadway musical the Sound of Music, which was then made into the film in 1965. Right. And, of course, everyone knows with Julie Andrews, um, she was the original uh, uh, Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady on Broadway, being British. Um, but when they went to cast the movie, she did not get the role. She uh, The role went to Audrey Hepburn because nobody knew who Julie Andrews was at that time. But very soon after, Walt Disney came and saw her performing uh, in Camelot, actually on Broadway, and said, you'd be perfect for this other role. And he put her in her very first film, which was Mary Poppins, and she won an Oscar for it. Can you imagine your very first time on camera? And you win an Oscar. That's awesome. It's pretty amazing. And so then she, after Mary Poppins, 
uh, was cast in Sound of yeah, Music. Yeah, the, the following year after Mary Poppins, she was in The Sound of Music. Amazing. And uh, she won the Golden Globe uh, for Best Picture um, and for Best Actress. Uh, sorry, she won the Golden Globe for Best Actress in a motion picture comedy or musical. So I'm wondering if we want to talk a little bit about the Von Trapp tour that we took. Yeah, that was a lot of fun too. So one of the things when, you, when you're a guest of the hotel and we were just debating which hotel we would, should stay at because – Stowe, Vermont, offers some beautiful hotels. but uh, It's one of the great ski capitals of the United States. It's along with, you know, Park City in Utah, sure. Aspen, Colorado, Stowe, Vermont is one of those places you go to ski. And did we ski there? We certainly did not. Did we ski in Park, Park City? No, certainly did not. And did you ski in Aspen? I did. And it was because I skied in Aspen that I vowed I would never ski again. <laughs> and so since then, all I've done is visit ski towns. Fair enough. But that aside, um, we had so much fun. So we, because we were um, clients of the hotel, what would you call it? Not clients, because we stayed there, I guess. What do you call someone who stays in a hotel? A patron? No, I don't think they're called patrons. A guest. Guest. I because we guest. were guests of the hotel. Part of the experience is you can do a Sound of Music tour. Mm-hmm. And here's the funny thing. What they, what they, what they mention on the tour is you're going to have someone kind of tell you the details. And then one of the living family members of Maria von Trapp will then conclude the tour. So I was like, we have to do that. And I was worried we wouldn't be able to get on the list because I got on it so last, like I called so yeah. last minute. But we yeah. got on the list. We did. And we did the tour. And Amanda, do you want to ta- pick it up where the t- tour starts? Oh, well, the tour starts with um, a wonderful lady. And I'm trying to remember her name that we had. Janice? Carol? Linda? Barbara? I don't know. Anyway, she, uh, Kathy? She, um had been working with the Von Trapps for a long time. So she gave a nice, a really quite an in-depth history of the family, um, where the money and the property of the family came from, Um, obviously the war, and uh, and then how Maria sort of came into the family. And then they play a video um, that was a documentary that had been recorded in the early 1980s, of Maria von Trapp herself interviewing and talking about um, how the how she came into the family, how the actual proposal went, and and fascinating documentary. Yeah, really fascinating about that time in Austria and what it was like to be in Austria at that time. And um, and we also they also talked about where the actual story differs sure. from the movie, and that yeah. was fascinating too, and where it is the same. Yeah, and then our. Our, our tour person or our, our animator, or what would you call Kathy, Barbara? Tour or, guide. Tour guide uh, said, that's it from me. I'll be seeing you. Well, she uh, actually took us out oh, to right. the family plots. So the, um, the various headstones of people that had passed in the family, including, of course, Maria and Georg. Um, and, and it was be- in a beautiful was setting. Beautiful. It was also very snowy. So. Uh, and it was sort of the first real snowfall, I think, that had happened in the season. So we all got – she didn't have the right boots on. So Ideally, we, you should have worn um, like snow snow sho- snowshoes and snow, snow pants shoes, to get yeah. there, but we didn't. And I will say about that resort, because it really truly is a resort, they have snowshoes and um, cross-country skis. So it's not just for skiing downhill, but there's lots of winter activities and probably summer activities as well to do. Because um, you saw people on cross-country skis sort of on trails all around you and stuff and – and that's all part of the amenities there. But anyway, so we went and did that. And then we came back. And that is when we met. Do you remember her name? I don't. It's Christina. Christina Von Trapp. Christina Von Trapp is her name. And she is the granddaughter of Maria and Georg Von Trapp, of course, the Von Trapps. Yes. And uh, her dad was the youngest child, the only child that was born stateside. Right. So not in Austria, but in the United States after they were a touring act in the United States for many years. Her father was born there and um, and he has taken over the family business and he's still alive today. And so either he or one of his kids uh, gives this part of the tour every Sunday. And so we got Christina and she was lovely. She was amazing. She was amazing, and she. One of the things that that struck me was she said, "You know, of all the genes that I got from my family, singing the singing gene is not one of them." She said, "I didn't get the Austrian singing gene; I got the the skiing Austrian genes." 
and loves to ski, but not so much singing. <laughs> yeah, so that was a funny moment too. Yeah. So that was our tour. That was our experience at the Von Trapp Family Lodge. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love Vermont, and I cannot wait to go back. It is really beautiful, and the people are wonderful, and the drive was absolutely lovely. And now I just want to see different areas of Vermont that we haven't seen. So that'll be next on my list when we head that way, Amanda. Well, I'm glad we went. I mean, we went for your birthday. I wanted you to have something special, and so I'm actually really really happy to hear that you had you have such wonderful memories of it. I certainly do. And of course, uh, dear listeners, thank you for listening to our podcast and thank you for being excited. I received some messages uh, just the other day that people are excited that we're coming back today. Mm -hmm. And so that's always lovely as well. Mm -hmm. Until our next episode, Amanda, is there anything you'd like to say before we sign off of this So one? long, farewell, Alvita Sun, goodbye. And we will see you or hear you will hear us on the next episode. Thank you for listening. We hope you were able to listen and sleep. <laughs>